And speaking of young talent, let's stroll down that road to Wrigley presented by Prevagen because the future of the Chicago Cubs, it's here today. Take a look at these guys. You may recognize them from all the highlights that you see on Cubs Post Game Live. It's Matt Mervis and Pete Crow Armstrong. And fellas, just first things first, you're in Chicago, lovely day, obviously a ball game going on at the Federal Landmark. Uh, what's your first impression of Chicago? Uh, the stadium's beautiful. The first thing I thought of was, you know, hotels right across the street from Wrigley. You see the big red sign. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we got, got to go to the game yesterday and, and see the guys play, so uh, I'm excited to be here. Just to piggyback off that, it's just the atmosphere. You feel it right away. You hear it. You, 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 know, you smell it. So, uh, no, Wrigley's just a beautiful place to be. It smells good, right? It smells great. <laughs> right, it just wanted to get that out of the way. It smells great. It's good uh, incredible years for you guys. Like, you know, like we said, we've been following it all year here at Marquee and being able to watch what you guys are doing. Um, just for you guys, the satisfaction of, A, first of all, just being healthy and playing a whole year. What was the season like for you? It was special. I mean, personally, it was, it was my first full full season. So, you know, on the on the topic of health, like that was uh, a main goal of mine, main priority was just to finish out the year healthy. And, I'm you know, I'm happy I did so. But... It was great, you know. I, I'm spoiled. I got to win a I got to win a championship with with South Bend my first year, you know. Um, got a, we had a great team over there, and uh, yeah, it was, I think it was a great way to kickstart uh, my my pro career. So. Yeah, good for you. And for you, dude, whirlwind, three different levels, moving up the chain. It was a big year. It went fast. Um, yeah, I started in South Bend, and I didn't really know what to expect this year. Uh, you know, I struggled a bit last year in Myrtle Beach, and that kind of allowed me to just play free this year. Like, whatever happens, happens. And, um, you know, I started playing well a couple weeks into South Bend, and from there just never looked back, kept playing. It was a lot of fun. Um, I stay, stayed healthy, too. I missed last, mo last month of the season last year with COVID. So, um, you know, able to play, I don't know how many games this year, but over 500 at-bats and, and really make up for, for some lost time. And you were drafted in 2016 by the Washington Nationals. You chose to go to Duke. You were a two-way player there. Do you ever take a look back and say, you know, I, I had what it took on the mound, but uh, this could have been the right decision when I go in the batter's box? I stepped on the mound because it got me into college and okay. got me into the field or onto the field when I wasn't hitting. So, um, you know, I've always seen myself as a hitter, and once I got the, the at-bats that I needed, it developed, and that's, where I'm, that's how I got here. Pretty much a whatever-it-takes mentality? Yeah, I want to play. Okay. Well, PCA, how about you, man? You know, from the very start, obviously some high expectations, first round draft pick by the New York Mets. Uh, how was that transition from high school to the pros? It was, uh, it was smooth, I think. You know, I, I owe everything to, to, to Brody and, and the Mets for, for starting my career, you know. Um, and it was a great place to be to start. But uh, I think the transition from from New York to, to Chicago was a, a, a little more challenging, just because I was I was hurt at the time, and um, you know I, I felt like my main goal at the time was just to get this right and get my shoulder right. So um, it was a bit of a surprise, but then very quickly when I got to Arizona, you know, uh, you know my plan of action was pretty simple. I needed to finish the rehab, and like I said, great place to do it. We had a great group of guys there, and it was a really really good. Uh, it was a great introduction to the Cubs organization. So, you and Canario going head to head for homers. I mean, how much smack talking <laughs> was going on about who was going to finish with that? There was a good amount. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we were we were jabbing each other a little bit, all friendly, obviously, but um, you know, supporting each other. When I'd hit one, I'd say it's his turn. He'd do the same thing for me. So, um, you know, he had that three home run game in Omaha a couple of weeks ago and and caught up to me in one game. So I kind of. I had to hit one the next day, and I think I did, but you know, he tied it up by the end of the week, and then we were going back and forth for the last couple games of the year. And you said guy, other guys on the team, other accomplishments, guys were trying to get everybody kind of pushing each other to, to reach those goals. Yeah. Uh, Levi Jordan was looking for a couple more hits. Darius Hill wanted another home run. Hicks wanted a home run in the stolen base, which he got both of in the last three-game series. So, um, you know, it was a ton of fun. You know, we were way under 500 this year. A lot of guys could have just mailed it in, but... Um, you know, we were able to support each other. We were pushing each other to, to reach that, those goals that we wanted to get to. So, um, you know, we weren't playing for a championship like these guys, but we were able to stay locked in and, and give it our all until the last game. Obviously, you guys were able to hoist some of that championship hardware. What did that feel like, especially at such a young point in your career? It was special. Um, the minor leagues is different than anything I've uh, experienced baseball-wise, you know, and to see the level of... of care and you know intensity um, 
that we kind of just collectively played with as a team, it was very cool. Um, you know, because it was important baseball to us. It wasn't like anybody was trying to skip levels and, and get anywhere else. We were all just very um, focused on being where we were at. And you see why, you see why we, we took home that hardware was because, you know, we, we played as a team. Uh, it, was, it was just good baseball all around. It felt unreal. A bunch of hungry young dudes. That's right. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. what it looks yeah, like. And okay, so now here's the challenge, right? Great year, great year. You guys are up for minor league players of the year of the Cubs. You're going to the fall league, going in the off season. How do you challenge yourself to make sure you don't become complacent and, and don't believe the hype, right? Because that's the biggest thing we can do as young players. So how do you challenge yourself going, going forward? I'll start with you, Matt. I think that's why we're here. Um, you know, a lot of meetings we had yesterday were about, you know, this is where you're at, great job, we're happy for you, proud of you, stuff like that. But, you know, today and tomorrow are about where you're going and how you're going to get there. So, you know, we're still prospects. That means you haven't done anything yet. Um, so looking on what we can improve to, to get us up here in the Wrigley and, and how we can help the Cubs win. Yeah, you said that really well. I think that's, uh, that's exactly why we're here. You know, they, they're reminding us of that. And, uh, but at the same time, they're, they're showing us that they have you know, a lot of faith in us. And I think that feels really good. And, and that adds um, you know, extra motivation if, if needed. And um, you know, it kind of puts the timeline into perspective a little bit. And you know, it's just, it's just all of this is motivation to actually get up here and stick up here. So it's not like we're just coming up here for you know, five days. Yeah, right. getting some good weather when it comes to this weekend's <laughs> right. business trip. It's That's looking right. pretty nice out there right across the street. And some good food, too. Uh, These no, guys are no eating about it. Yeah, yeah, you know they're going to have uh, their, their choice of the fine fare. Now, you know, I want to ask you because you said uh, you were out there on the mound because it gave you a chance to keep on playing and play at Duke University, obviously. But as a hitter, do you think you have more insight when it comes to what that guy's out there on the mound, what he's actually thinking when you're in that batter's box? Uh, not only the pitcher, but also pitching coaches and catchers. Um, okay. You know, that's something that I, I think developed a lot this year is, is understanding how catchers are trying to get me out. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, teams will cycle through two or three catchers a week, and, you know, maybe one guy thinks he can get fastballs in by me, another guy thinks change-ups, stuff like that. So... I'm guessing um, those are the pitches they can't get you out on. They can try. <laughs> <laughs> they, I'm like just, just understanding how, how certain teams work, how certain pitching coaches work, um, stuff like that I think really helps. Um, Pete, you're a two-way player in a sense of defense and offense. Some of the catches you've made, we've seen them. They've been unbelievable. Um, as an outfielder, as a kid growing up, who was the, who was the guy that you watched and you're like, I'm going to play just like that? I think it all started with, so it all started with Griffey for me, for sure. I mean, you know, that guy is, in, in my eyes, the, the GOAT. But uh, Andrew McCutcheon was big for me. Uh, I, I grew up watching Alfonso Soriano, being a Cubs fan, all the time. Um, he was somebody that got me very interested in outfield as well. But I'd say outfield, outfield defense was Kutch. Uh, you know, his MVP year, year with, the, with the Pirates and all, all those years with the Pirates were I think like the most fun time to watch him and uh, it was a great time for me. It was when I was just starting to really like consider myself an outfielder only. So uh, I'd, I'd credit it to Kutch, but you know, watching Javi too defensively, just, you know, I don't think that you need to, you know, limit yourself just to your position. You know, I think anything about this game that inspires you is, is worth taking a look at. So um, yeah, Kutch, Javi, Griffey, Soriano, whoever. Yeah, those I are could, good role models. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. How about you, Matt? Uh, Left-handed power hitters, Prince Fielder, David Ortiz. Uh, more recently, you know Rizzo and Schwarber, guys like that. So I like home runs. I like left-handed oh, hitters. Okay. So <laughs> Griffey, obviously. I feared yeah. those guys, by the yeah. way. Yeah, left-handed <laughs> power hitters, not my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> they're fun to watch. Yeah, something tells me you guys will be following in the footsteps of the cats that you used to watch once upon a time. Matt Mervis, Pete Crow Armstrong, gentlemen, the future of the Chicago Cubs. Thanks so much for taking time out. Thank really you. appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend right here in Chicago, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, thank you.